The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is, 7th chapter, text number 1, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on July 1st, 1972, in San Diego. Chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the nature of Krishna consciousness is fully described. Krishna is full in all opulences, and how He manifests such opulences is described herein. Also, four kinds of fortunate people who become attached to Krishna and four kinds of unfortunate people who never take to Krishna are described in this chapter. In the first six chapters of Bhagavad Gita, the living entity has been described as non-material spirit soul, which is capable of elevating himself to self-realization by different types of yogas. At the end of the sixth chapter, it has been clearly stated that the steady concentration of the mind upon Krishna or in other words, Krishna consciousness is the highest form of all yoga. By concentrating one's mind upon Krishna, one is able to know the absolute truth completely, but not otherwise. Impersonal Brahma Jyoti or localized Paramatma realization is not perfect knowledge of the absolute truth because it is partial. Full and scientific knowledge is Krishna, and everything is revealed to the person in Krishna consciousness. In complete Krishna consciousness, one knows that Krishna is ultimate knowledge beyond any doubt. Different types of yoga are only stepping stones on the path of Krishna consciousness. One who takes directly to Krishna consciousness automatically knows about Brahma Jyoti and Paramatma in full. By practice of Krishna consciousness yoga, one can know everything in full, namely the absolute truth, the living entities, the material nature, and their manifestations with paraphernalia. <coughs> one should therefore begin yoga practice as directed in the last verse of the sixth chapter concentration of the mind upon Krishna the supreme is made possible by prescribed devotional service in nine different forms of which there are many persons who like meditation nowadays it is very popular <coughs> especially in your country but when you ask them what is the subject of meditation, they cannot say. Can you say what is the subject of meditation? Anyone who is little aware of this meditation, what is that meditation? The topic of negation. Eh? The topic of Negation how? Negation, something positive you negate. So what is that positive and what is that negation? Nobody can answer. That means these are manufacturing. Actually, there is the uh, fixed up knowledge. There's like somebody was asked, transcendental meditation. Said, what is a transcendental meditation? Can anyone explain? I, I went to one of their meetings and they told us about concentrating feeling. Not very, I want to say, clear. Something vague. Uh, so, <coughs> This will not help. Here is a positive proposition that you concentrate on the form of Krishna. Maya Sakta Manatma. Yogi Nama Pi Sarvesa Madhgata Antaratmana Sadhyavan. Antaratmana. One has to uh, fix up the form. Actual yoga system is to concentrate on the form of Vishnu. Dhyanavasthitatadgatina manasā. By meditation means to concentrate the mind uh, without being diverted to any other subject, simply thinking of Lord Vishnu. Uh, that is the uh, yoga meditation recommended in Vedic literature. So here also Krishna says, uh, me, Krishna and Vishnu, they say, Vishnu is expansion of Krishna. 
So when we concentrate our mind upon Krishna, uh, Vishnu is included there. Mm-hmm. The concentration of the mind upon Krishna as the Supreme is made possible by prescribed devotional service mm-hmm. in nine different forms, of which Shravanam is the first and most important. Mm-hmm. So our yoga system is not like that, that we whole day, twenty-three hours and forty-five minutes, I engage myself in all nonsensical activities, and fifteen minutes I concentrate my mind with meditation. Uh, that kind of yoga system is not here. Here, twenty-four hours meditation. Uh, even during sleeping, twenty-four hours during sleeping hours. Life should be molded, molded in such a way that uh, twenty-four hours you will be able to think of Krishna. So uh, we are engaging our students in so many Krishna activities. Uh, they are going to the park chanting Hare Krishna or distributing literature. All these activities, uh, remembering Krishna, they have no other, uh, I want to say, thought <coughs> except Krishna. So, uh, this fifteen minutes, twenty minutes sitting is all right, but one who is twenty-four hours thinking of Krishna or Vishnu, how far he is advanced, that can you imagine? Therefore Krishna says personally, yogi namapi sarvi saṁ, of all the yogis. Uh, there are different types of yogis. Uh, it, is, it is not that, just that we do some other business, uh, twenty-three hours, forty-five minutes, and fifteen minutes we sit down for meditation. No, twenty-four. Uh, Kirtaniya sadā hari. Sadā means twenty-four hours. That is recommendation of Chaitanya Mahāpārāda. Tinādhapi sunitena tarorapi sahisnana amānina mānadena kītaniya sadā. So uh, execute this twenty-four hours meditation, one has to be become, uh, has to become, has to become very humble. Because so many people will criticize, uh, just like last night or after this you are saying that some of you fellow officer was criticizing. Uh, so we have to tolerate. Uh, just like when the elephant passes, many dogs bark. So we do not care for these dogs barking. Uh, as elephant, he must go on gravely. Therefore, Tinada Vishnu is Sena. Tarora Vishnu is Vishnu. We have to execute this. Twenty-four hours Krishna Vishnu. Krishna consciousness. All is absorbed in thought of Krishna. In sitting, in walking, in eating, in sleeping, everything. In walking. Uh, that is first class yoga. It is also yoga, first class yoga, uh, not third class, fourth class yoga. Uh, of course, any yoga system, uh, we cannot say it is third class, fourth class, but when we make comparative study, that must be something better or something inferior. Uh, that's why we have already described uh, you have got a staircase to go to the one hundredth floor. So one has gone twenty steps, one has gone fifty steps, one has gone seventy-five steps, one has gone full hundred steps. So one who has gone twenty-five steps, he cannot be compared with one who has gone one hundred steps. 
Similarly, the yoga system is just like a staircase for going to the spiritual world. So one who has taken to Krishna consciousness, he is on the top, top most of us. God. The Lord therefore says to Arjuna, touch Shrinu, or hear from me. No one can be a greater authority than Krishna, and therefore by hearing from him... Here, here is another important point. We have to learn by listening from somebody. Uh, we approach Guru for hearing from uh, the truth. Just like child listens from the parents and he learns to speak, he learns to know what is what. The father says, this is this. this child also says, this is this. The father says, this is spoon. The child also says, this is spoon. So he learns by hearing. Modern language means uh, if the child is uh, handed over to some other person uh, whose mother, whose language is different from the mother, he will learn from the very beginning, he will learn that language. So hearing is very important. Therefore, our uh, bhakti process, bhakti yoga process, is here. The more you <coughs> give oral reception to the transcendental message, more you become explored. <coughs> you haven't got to uh, become a PhD or very learned fellow, or very scholar. No. Even a child, without any education, he can also become Krishna conscious, simply by hearing. In New York, in Los Angeles, our child friend, he's only three years old, oh, he said so many mantras, he has learned. Yes. So many. Of course, one child may be specially intelligent, but anyone can learn. Uh, the method is simply here, and seeing the behavior. He put one child in this association, automatically with his growth he will become a Vaishnava, a Krishna conscious growth, automatically. <coughs> By seeing these activities, by thinking of Krishna, because the child will get the opportunity for hearing the word Krishna, Krishna. Everyone has got God gifted instrument this year, and if we give oral reception, we we'll learn. There is no need of education. A B C D. No. <coughs> So, uh, hearing is uh, so important. In Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's preaching was, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's, this propaganda, Sankirtan movement, he has given stress on this hearing part. Tane sthita sutigatang tanuvang mano hi. You can remain in your place. You don't say that you change your place. Whatever you are, you remain. If you are American, you remain American. If you are Hindu, you remain Hindu. If you are Muslim, you remain Muslim. Uh, we don't say that first of all you become a Hindu or a Greek or that. No. We simply request, please come here, sit down and hear. That's all. This is yoga system. Hearing yoga you don't say press that you do this, you do that. Uh, we say the regulatory principle when one is uh, seriously become uh, our intimate uh, friend or member, then we say that you have to follow the rules and limits. That we'll agree. If he has actually heard our words, 
And then immediately he left. He did not well do that. Uh, so hearing is so important. Savanam. Uh, Savanam means hearing. Uh, <coughs> So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was talking with Ramananda Rai. The process of self-realization, uh, he'll have it. For those who have got teachings of Lord Chaitanya, he did it uh, when Ramananda Rai and Lord Chaitanya were speaking. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked, Ramananda Rai, what is the best process for self-realization? Because life is meant for self-realization. This human life is meant for self-realization. atma tattam Otherwise it is animal life. The animals, they are cats and dogs, they are not interested in self-realization. So, but human life, is meant for self-realization. Therefore, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu questioned Ramananda Rai. So what is the best process of self-realization? He recommended, first of all, the Varnasam Dharma. Varnasam uh, Charvatam uh, Purushena Parakumar Vishnu Aradhati Pungsa Nana Tattu Sukarana. The real business is Vishnu Aradhana. Vishnu, the all pervading Supreme Personality of God, who is within the atom, who is within your heart, and who is also in his uh, Goloka Vrindavan, that all pervading. So, Varnasam Dharma means uh, how to realize that supreme, all pervading God. That is Varna. Varna means four uh, social division Brahman, Kshatri, Vaishya, Sudra. And Asram means four uh, spiritual divisions Brahmachari, Grihastha, Bhanaprastha. So, Accepting these uh, four spiritual and four material principles of life, that is humanity. One who is not within this category, but not some dharma, he is not accepted as a human being or a civilized being. In the civilized nation, there is the four divisions of spiritual life and four divisions of... But they do not know it. But those who are followers of Vedic culture, they know how the divisions are to be. Just like in your body, you have got four divisions. The head division, the arms division, the belly division, and the leg division. They are all required. It is not that simply you have got a nice brain like Professor Einstein. That will do. No. You must have hands also. You must have belly. You must have legs. Then it is complete. Uh, the head is most important part of the body. That is all right. But leg is also required. You cannot neglect leg. <coughs> so similarly, this division is very scientific. Intelligent class of men and uh, martial class of men and productive class of men and laborer class of men. So, when we compare the laborer class of men with intellect, intellect, intellectual class of men, there is difference. But both of them are important factors to maintain this body. That is called Varnasamra. So life's aim is self-realization. Uh, Vishnu, uh, not the skyscraper. Uh, these are piling 
stones and wools. This is not very intelligent one. Uh, with wools and pine, uh, stones and, and, and art is there already, big, big mountain hills. You do the business of a porter, carry it out and I am saying, keep, keep it in one place. It becomes a skyscraper building and if you simply are proud of these uh, heaps of stones and woods and iron, and that is their civilization. That is their civilization. Uh, civilization is that the living entity who is using these resources what, to know what is actual business. <coughs> This piling of stones and wood is done also by the birds. They also pick up, according to their thread, uh, some twigs, and they make a nest. That intelligence is there. Uh, the rat also, he makes subway. <laughs> so this is not very intelligent one. To imitate the rats, the birds, the cats, the dogs, that is not civilization. Civilization means self awareness what I am. Why I am forced to die? I do not like to die. To know this, that is civilization. When all these inquiries will come into one's mind, well, I do not wish to die. Why death is there? Of course, I am forced to die. I do not wish to be uh, diseased. Why disease? Something is <coughs> upon me. When this why question will come, why? Uh, that is human. And if he remains dull, all right, like we die, there is cat and dog. That's all. If there is no why, then he is cat. So, uh, human civilization does not mean this piling of woods and stone. No, that is not it. Human civilization means uh, Brahma Jignasa, inquest. These are inquest. Why? Why I am forced to do These things are taught regularly in the Barnasam system. One is met brahmachari, saligasi, spiritual. One is met very uh, decently, family life, grihastha. One is met retired life, sannyasi, very systematic. If we don't follow the varnasam dharma, then we are not even human beings. That's a tendo. So therefore, Ramananda I proposed, this Varnasana, Varnasana Charvata, he quoted from Vishnu Pura. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, oh, this is reject. He is reject. They are so scientific in institution of Varnasana Dharma system coming from very early age. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, this is external. Say something better. Uh, so in this way, uh, Ramananda Raya uh, was putting some better proposal than Varnasam Dharma, then uh, Varnasam Tyag, Tyag means renouncing, renounce order. A Chaitanya Mahaprabhu speaking, no, no, it is, it is not very important. Go more. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, yeah, Ramananda Raya quoted one verse from Bhagavatam, it was spoken by Brahma, that jnāne prayāsam mudapāsana mantaiva. When one gives up this nonsense speculative process, everyone is speculating, the scientist, philosopher, everyone is speculating just to show himself 
that he has grown very learned, he can put some theory. So this is first rejected. Brahma, Brahma says, Brahma's experience, he is the topmost living creature within this universe. He said that when a person will give up this nonsense habit of speculation, jnāne prayāsam dhupāsam, he must become submissive. One should not pose himself that he knows something, he can speculate something, he can invent something, uh, just like the so-called scientists, they are simply speculating and wasting labor. Uh, nothing can be done by you. Everything is already arranged. You cannot change. You can simply see how the law is working. So much you can do. But neither you can change the law, you can make a better facility for the law. No. That you cannot do. Devidhishagunamai mama maya durutya. Durutya means that it is very difficult. So, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he has informed the statement of Brahma, that one should give up the speculative method, that he can create something. This nonsense habit should be given up. He must become very humble, humbler than the grass. It's like we trample over the grass. It does not protest. All right, sir, you go. That type of humble. Tinādha pīśuni tena taroro pīśahishnuna. Taro means three. Three so much. For the hearing. So, Chaitanya Mahamu said, Jnāne prāyāsa mudhapāsa namanta jīva, and then I give up this speculative process, and I become humbler as you are. Then what is my next duty? Next duty is namanta jīva, being humble, salma kharitāṅga bhavadī jīvāsa. You should approach a person who is a devotee, and you should hear from him. Sāne-sita, you remain in your place, you remain American, you remain Indian, you remain Christian, you remain Hindu, you remain black, you remain white, you remain one man, whatever you are. Simply you lend your ear to the discourses given by the realized soul. This is the problem. And when you hear, then you contemplate also, uh, just like you are hearing me, if you contemplate that what time you say, then sāne sita suti gatāṁ tanu vāṁ manu hi suti gatāṁ. Suti means just receiving through the ear. Uh, if you contemplate and try to understand with your body, mind, uh, then gradually, uh, you'll, because your aim is self-realization, the self means super-self, the Supreme Lord is the Supreme Self, we are part and parcel. So, by this process, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, uh, God, Ajita, one, he is never conquered. If you, uh, by challenge, if you want to know God, you'll never understand. God never accepts challenge. Because God is great, why should He accept your challenge? If you say, Oh, my dear God, please come here, I shall see you. So God is not like that. That He will carry your order. You must carry His order. Then God will be alive. God says, You surrender. Sarvadanman Paritpadya Mahamekam Sarvadanman. That process He will ask God. Not that, uh, oh, I shall know God. I have got good intelligence, secular. No. So this hearing, we are talking of the hearing, the hearing process is so important. 
all our this initiative, Krishna consciousness movement has spread because the students who have joined us, they have given oral reception by hearing. Uh, the, the hearing, everything was changed uh, within themselves and they have joined with full wholeheartedness and the going on. So hearing is so important. We are opening so many centers just to give people chance of hearing about the transcendence. So you take chance, you take, uh, I mean, the, the advantage of the uh, hearing talk. Okay? No one can be a greater authority than Krishna. And therefore, yes. by... then hearing from Krishna. The Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is speaking. They hear from him. If we say that oh, oh, Krishna is uh, no longer present before me, uh, no, Krishna is present by his Bhagavad Gita, his words and he, there is no difference. Absolute. Absolute. If you pollute the words, Krishna is speaking something and you are rest in nonsense explaining in different ways, then it has no meaning. Then Krishna is gone. But if you speak as Krishna is speaking, then it is. Krishna is present with him by his word. Immediately. By his word you can see Krishna. Just like the Brahmin in uh, South India, you are illiterate, you are uh, reading, trying to read Bhagavad Gita, but immediately Krishna becomes present before his eyes and he was crying. He was crying. That is it. So Krishna can be present uh, by his word. Because Krishna's word and Krishna is not different, absolutely. If you actually accept Krishna uh, in the form of Bhagavad Gita, then you are directly associating with Krishna as Arjuna was doing. There will be no difficulty. Ajita. Uh, Krishna is unconquered, but simply by your uh, humble, receptive form, prophet, he will conquer over Krishna. How he will conquer? Uh, he, he, he is already within your heart, you will realize that here is Krishna. That is conquer. No one can be a greater authority than Krishna, and therefore by hearing from him, one receives the greatest opportunity for progress in Krishna consciousness. One has therefore to learn from Krishna directly or from a pure devotee of Krishna and not from a non-devotee upstart puffed up with academic education. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, this process of understanding Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Absolute Truth, is described in the second <coughs> chapter of the first canto as follows. Srinvatang Svakatang Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Kridyam Tasto Hyabhadrani Vidunoti Suhitsatang Nashta Prayeshva Badreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavat Yuttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki Tada Rajastamo Bhava Kamulo Bhada Yashtraye Cheta Etaira Naviddham Sittam Satve Prasidati Evam Prasana Manuso Bhagavad Bhakti Jogataha Bhagavat Tattva Vidyanam Mukta Sangas Yajayate Vidyate Hridaya Grantish Chidyante Sadva Shamsaya Shiyante Chasya Karmani Drishta Evat Manishware Quote To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity and for one who hears about Krishna Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a well-wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. And by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. 
and thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. This is the process. By hearing, you become fire. Those who are hearing in this meeting, even they cannot understand the words which we are discussing, he is becoming purer. He is becoming, that is, that is like one becomes purer by acting quietly. So, simply hearing, if one cannot understand the whole thing, he becomes fire. Purna Savana Kita. One who is speaking Krishna's words and one who is hearing Krishna's words, both of them are becoming purified. So if we hear <coughs> daily, regularly, nittam, nittam bhagavata seva, uh, then nasta prayasu abhadrishu, nittam bhagavata seva. If you hear daily, just say we are holding class daily in the morning, uh, and bhagavata seva, seva means service, uh, to make the place nicely, clean so that devotees will sit down and some of the Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita will be discussed. This is called Bhagavata Seva, serving the Bhagavata. Nittana Bhagavata Seva ya nasta prayasu avadrishu. The whole difficulty is that our heart is uh, covered with so many dirty things. So by this process, this Bhagavata Seva, the dirty thing will be clean. Not that uh, exactly all clean, even a little portion is clean. Not uh, price, not fully clean. Price, almost. Then, immediately, Bhagavati Uttama Smriti, Bhakti Bhavati Nasti. Immediately come to the platform of Bhakti Yoga. Little clean. Sarvamapiyasadharma satrati mahato bhaya. Uh, not that. Uh, therefore, we sometimes see that one who has taken to Krishna consciousness is still, he is committing something wrong. Uh, but that is not very, um, uh, that is not a place of discouragement. You stick to this principle. Hipram bhavati dharma, apite sudurāca. We should not willingly do anything wrong. But due to our past habit, if we do something wrong, that we should not be discouraged, but stick to the principle. Then gradually it will be clean. Lasta prayesu avadrishu. Prayesu means almost clean, not completely clean. So we don't claim that we have become liberated from all dirty things. There are so many dirty things still. But little clearance will help us to become a devotee of the Lord. Nasta prayesu avadrishu nittam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama sloke bhakti bhavati naishthiki. Naishthiki, this is the state of attachment to Krishna, maya shakta mana. There are different stages. So this nishtha, firm faith. First of all, lose faith. Then as we execute devotional service, the faith becomes farmer, farmer, farmer. And when it comes to farmer, yes, Krishna uh, is the supreme personality of Godhead and his eternal servant. This is farm faith. Without any bhakti bhavati naishti. Tato rajasthamo bhava, kamalo bhava dayasthi. Chita etai ranabhidhya, sita shakti prasidati. Sita shakti prasidati. Tato go, when goodness, the most of goodness. So, uh, progress in devotional service means one is becoming perfect. Uh, because he is perfect, everyone is perfect. 
but he is covered with some dirty things, just like gold is covered with some dirty earth. But if you wash the gold, or by chemical process you keep clean, then real gold will come. Similarly, we are all part and parcel of God, therefore godly qualities are there in every one of us. It is simply covered by this material dirty. This will be clean by this hearing. The more you hear, the more it becomes clean, the more you become fixed up in devotional service, then more you give up your other uh, nonsense habits, kamo and lobo. Other nonsense habits, they are based on two things, lust and greediness. Kamo, lobo. Lust and greediness. These are two dirty things. So, tato rajasthamo bhava, kamo lobo bhava, yasthiti, chita, your heart will be clean of this lusty things and greediness, then you come to the pure modes of goodness. And as soon as you come to the pure platform of goodness, tato rajasthamo bhava, kamo lobo bhava, yasthiti, chita, itui, ramavidhya, then your heart will not be pierced by this nonsense too, rajagon and tamagon. You will be situated in satagon. Sito-sattit, sato-nadistamo-bhava-tamalo-bhava-yasthi, sita-yitri-yana-vidya, sita-sattit-prasidati, then you will see everything clearly and you will be satisfied. So this is my position. So this is the process of the more you become purified, the more you will advance in Krishna consciousness. And your advancement in Krishna consciousness will be tasted how you are developing good quality. Officially I am Krishna conscious yogi, uh, but I am still addicted to so many nonsense habits. That means you are not advanced. That is the test. Just Shasti Bhakti Bhagavata Kinsana Sarvai Gunai Tattasama. He hasn't got to learn how to become good. Simply by executing this devotional service, he will be all good. That is the test. Thank you.